Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at how to detect a collision between one instance and many other instances, okay? So I've got this red thing following my mouse around, and if I click just anywhere, um, it'll highlight red every instance that we've uh, collided with, and it'll also highlight the instance that was closest to the center of that collision, okay? And then click all over this place and it works. All right, now this used to be, uh, you've always been able to do this by one method or another, but very, very recently, last week with the release of Game Maker version 2.1.5, there's now a much easier method um, than ever before to do this kind of thing. And we can set it up in a very small amount of code that's very convenient and is actually pretty efficient. Um, so that's what I'm going to run you through. So my setup for this is just a room full of these little white squares, um, uh, oh, obstacle instances. They don't really run any code um, other than to set their image speed to be zero because how I'm showing whether or not they've been hit is to use their sprite. So if I look at this, I've got a sprite that has three frames, are not hit, a hit frame, and a hit closest frame, okay? So that we know which one um, is the closest. The other thing we have is a global O game object, okay, and all that does is draw that kind of big hitbox uh, underneath our mouse at any point in time, uh, just to show where we can be expecting to hit. And uh, whenever we press the left mouse button, it creates an instance of O projectile, okay, and O projectile is where all of our fun stuff happens. I just have a create event. And what we do is we create this projectile, we search for the collisions, which is what we'll get to in a moment, and then we just destroy the instance, okay? this If you've watched my video on doing melee collisions, okay, this works very much the same way as that does. We're just creating a projectile for a single frame. It never even gets rendered to the screen. Um, it just creates it, um, finds all these things, and then gets destroyed, okay? Now this here is one of the new functions that's been added to 2.1.5, okay? But almost all of the collision functions, so you've got collision rectangle, instance place, um, uh, instance position, and so on, um, all now have an extra variant where you add underscore list to the end, okay? So collision line, co collision underscore line underscore list, uh, instance underscore place underscore list, and so on. So the way we're used to using instance place and uh, these various different collision uh, functions is that we usually type them and they usually return uh, the ID of the one object that we've collided with. Um, so obviously if we wanna return uh, a list of instances, um, you know, uh, unless we were putting that into an array, uh, which is not how these functions work, we can't just stick that into a, a regular variable, okay? So what these functions actually now return is the number of collisions found, okay? And they return it into whatever variable you set it to equal, okay? Um, but just the number itself isn't helpful. We also wanna find those uh, instance IDs as well, okay? Um, so in order to do that, you need a DS list in which to store those IDs. Okay, you do have to create this list before calling the function. So let's just take a look at how this function actually works. So, uh, and, and what's familiar about it and what's what's new. So you remember from instance place, checking for an X position and a Y position to find um, a particular type of object. Okay, and also there'd be a function here to tell whether or not um, to count yourself uh, in all of that. We don't have that in this function. Um, the two new things that we have in this function are the list uh, that we actually want to return the um, the IDs to, okay? And as I say, you have to have created that one beforehand. And also whether or not to order the list, okay? Because obviously that's gonna change. Um, it's just gonna have a minor performance cost, I think, on top of calling the function. Um, what that does, is means it will order the collisions um, in uh, order the IDs, sorry, that it returns in order of the closest to furthest uh, collision, which is super helpful. I mean, you can do all kinds of things. Um, so we're gonna put that to true just so that we can demonstrate finding the closest one as I showed you at the beginning. Okay, so once we've called this function, that's gonna fill this DS list um, with a number of IDs or any IDs that it finds to be in a collision at this position with that um, object, okay? 
My next line here is to set var underscore closest to true. Um, this boolean is just going to be used to determine if we found the closest one, okay? And just to uh, tell our repeating statement in a, in a minute where we change our uh, sprites um, to only do the, the closest one once with whichever is uh, whichever ID happens to be at the very top of this list, okay? So we know our very first entry in the list is gonna be the closest one. So that's why I've set this to true, and then once we found it, we set it back to false. So I've gone and done a repeat statement because we know exactly how many uh, collisions, uh, exactly how many instances we need to affect because we've got it in this variable. As I said, the main thing this returns is it fills up this DS list and it returns the number of collisions, okay? So in hit count is the number of collisions, so we want to repeat this that many times. Uh, what I'm going to do is do a with statement uh, with DS list find value, uh, the name of the DS list, and position zero. So with whichever entry is at the very top of our DS list. And at the top of our DS list is our closest uh, collision. Um, so if closest, which we set closest to be true, uh, set image index to be two. And we know our second frame um, from S obstacle is this one with the X. Okay, um, but uh, if closest isn't true, which we'll set it to false after doing this first one, uh, we set image index to one, which is just the red box, okay? And then once we've done that, uh, we delete the top entry of the list. That just means that we can repeat this and it will do the same thing next time, okay? And then we set closest to false. And then it will go back round again for as many collisions as we have, but after it's done, it, done the first one, obviously it's gonna set every one from that point onwards to image index one, not image index two, because we've now set closest to false, okay? Um, but you could do whatever you want because it turns them in full order. It doesn't just get the closest one, uh, it gets them in full order. And you could do anything you want with that DS list. You could reverse it so that, or like work from the bottom up and do things based on whichever one is furthest away, whichever one's in the middle, you know, which you can find an average. You, you can do whatever you want. It's really, really useful. Obviously, if you don't care about the order, um, you can speed up this function just by setting this to false because then it's just going to return uh, an unordered list of... Um, of instance IDs and you can just, you know, do a with with all of them, right? You can just repeat and just cycle through the list that way. Um, but we've got it to find our closest one. And then once we're done with that, obviously you every time you create a data structure like a DS list, you want to make sure to destroy it afterwards to clean it up from memory. So we've done that there. And then instance destroy and just get rid of this projectile. And that's how it works. Um, so I'll just run just a dem I already demonstrated it at the beginning, but I'll just to demonstrate it again. So we've got this, so this obviously is just a drawing, this red square, this isn't actually doing anything. We create uh, an instance of a projectile and it just instantly goes away because it's destroyed by the end of its create event, right? You never even get around to doing a draw of itself. So we click somewhere, it uh, gets every collision um, with the box that we'll have created uh, within its bounding box, um, returns them all in order of whichever one is closest to um, the, you know, where the origin point of the object was, and this is in the center of this object. Um, marks that one to image index equal two, and then goes through all the others and sets them all to image index one. Okay, so there you have it. And that can be really, really useful for if you're doing melee attacks and things, or, or any kind of like attack or thing in your game that needs to uh, collide with multiple things at once all on the same frame. Um, it's a very quick, easy way of doing that. One of the fastest ways of doing it before, or if you're in 1.4, still, um, it's still the, probably the, the best way of doing it. If you're in, uh, if you're not in uh, Gaming Studio 2, uh, involves essentially using instance uh, deactivate and instance activate to sort of get the objects in a region um, and working out that way. So there are still plenty of ways of doing it. Um, if you're not in GameX Studio 2, they're just harder. <laughs> um, and thanks to 2.1.5, this is now really, really easy and convenient. Um, so there, there you have it. That's how you get multiple collisions in GameX Studio 2. Thank you for watching. This is just a quick video in between working on the platformer series. That'll be coming out, the next episode will be coming out very soon. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. And here are the awesome people responsible for my videos continuing to get made. Thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters, without whom I couldn't do any of this cool stuff. Thank you in particular, and in no particular order, to Owen Morgan, Dan, Mark Lintz, Jason McMillan, Harold Guidry, Stephen Hagen, Bowser the Dog, Nick Slabish, Seanathan, James Grumley, Michael Ward, Matt Coat, 
Patrick Guffey, Zenan May, TJ, Robert Churches, Zephyr Flame, Roven Darlin, Valp, Turtle Time, Run, Cody Hodkinson, Kimo Zavalampi, Toby, Mike KB, and Jason B. Thank you all for supporting what I do. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers, guys.